Hello everyone, I'm Dan Reed and welcome to the FWA live event here in Sudbury on Saturday, April the 1st. And April the 1st is a very important date because this is Who's Falling Who. Main event tonight will be a tag team encounter. It will be pinning the FWA British Heavyweight Champion, the South City Thriller, Hade Vance, and teaming with the ice cold technical wrestling wizard that is James Ty to take on Johnny Storm and Jody Fleisch. But we're going to kick things off right now with the man who's standing in that ring making his FWA debut, the man that gravity forgot, Pac, as he takes on Stevie Lynn. Stevie Lynn, however, has competed in the FWA before. Great round of applause there for Pack in his FWA debut. So we're now waiting on the arrival of unbreakable Stevie Lynn. This is actually the first two, the first time these two have actually competed against one another. It's quite funny considering the two actually only live about 20 miles apart. They've even bumped into each other around town and beaten the crap out of one another. Steven Lynn throws himself into the ring. This match could be something special. And all eyes are on Pac. Pac is coming in with a lot of fanfare and talk about him, about how great and how daredevil his style is and how he could be the, the future not just of the flyweight division but of British wrestling Pack in great shape as is Stevie Lynn fans getting behind us straight away I said all eyes on Pack here maybe a few butterflies in his stomach in his first FWA appearance not so in the case of Stevie Lynn the main thing that will be on Stevie Lynn's mind is to make sure that Pack doesn't see Stevie Lynn as a stepping stone in his FWA debut. Steven Lynn rolls through, takes the arm. Pack showing that he can wrestle as well. Not just all about the high flying. He rolls underneath, hips out, and takes the arm as well. Fans showing their appreciation for this. Steven Lynn goes under the arm. He takes back into a headlock, and this is a wise move, really. Steven Lynn will no doubt studied the tapes of Pack that he'll have seen elsewhere. Check out www.a-merchandise.co.uk. Check out Pack in action for other promotions, such as the FWA's Academy on the Supercard Series. Pack and Steve Lynn circling right now and they're saying Steve Lynn will be wanting to ground Pack and keep hold of him. He will not want Pack to take to the air stop on those ropes or anything like that. He'll want to keep on with him. Pack actually keeping on top of Stevie Lynn now. We'll be trying to wear him down so we can go to that top rope and do whatever the, the, the moves are that he defies gravity with. Whatever move that comes to mind when he's on that top rope. Nice steps underneath the arm. Back heel trip, takes Pack down. You see the knee being driven into that shoulder. And he twists on that wrist. Pack rolls out, back to his feet. Takes hold of that leg. Notice how the other leg is keeping that foot down. And that other foot of Stevie Lynn's down, so he can't swing it round and kick him. Stevie Lynn's having to stretch to those ropes and gets a clean break. Both men fan favorites here in the FWA. The other thing that's very much important about this is the fact that tomorrow night at Crunch, these two will compete against one another uh, alongside the FWA British flyweight champion Ross Jordan. Pack has come into this uh, into the FWA with such momentum, such recognition that in his second match he'll be competing for the FWA flyweight title. Stevie Lynn, however, has taken the gift Ross Jordan, the FWA flyweight champion, to the limit in previous attempts, including one at Hot Wired. Nice head scissor, Hurricane Runner takeover there. From Stevie Lynn, maybe takes Pack off guard. Whoa! 
Pack tries for that Asahi Moonsault there. Stephen Lynn rolls out of the way. Pack lands on his feet. Drops out there by Pack. Sends Stevie Lynn to the outside. Stephen Lynn retreats, trying to get his breath back. Fans getting behind Pack. Pack gets charged in by Stephen Lynn. Stephen Lynn goes over the top, going for that suplex. Blue Thunder driver. Well, that'll certainly ground him. That'll press. It's a two count. I was saying earlier, these two tomorrow night will compete in a triple threat match along with a gift Ross Jordan for the FWA British Flyweight title. Nice running elbow there. Whoever gets the victory in this match will, of course, be going into, go into tomorrow night's match at Crunch with a lot of victory, with a lot of momentum. And there's a nice standing moonsault there. Fans getting behind Stevie Lynn and Pack and getting behind this match. Forearm shot to Pack. Irish whips. Oh! Telegraphed the backdrop and Pack just stomped on his head and Pack just done it again and just runs up his back and jumps with that double foot stop. Moonsault of his own coming up. Well, I don't know what to call that. It was like a, a corkscrew moonsault there, like a sky twister press, but I've never seen that done before from a standing position in the ring. I've only ever seen it done from a, the top rope. Pack tries for a cross body. Steven in, picks him up over his shoulder. Death Valley driver onto the knee. Stevie Lynn saying it should be a three count this time. However, Pat gets the shoulder up. Maybe if Stevie Lynn hadn't taken his time to focus on the referee and just gone for the cover straight away and hooked that leg, he might have got a three count. Irish whips Pat. Standing leg lariat there. This time he hooks the leg. He knows the mistake he made last time. Stevie Lynn, the larger of the two. Irish whip attempt coming up. Double knees to the stu to the sternum, snap mounts him over. Tries to kick him there, had to reposition Pack, who's immediately coming back down. And now Stevie Lynn's going for the lariat. Pack saw it coming, ducks the lariat, crucifix attempt. Stevie Lynn just drops down in a fall away slam. Covers, but no, Pat gets that right shoulder up. Stevie Lynn now slows the pace down, grabs hold of Pack. He's not going to let him run those ropes anymore. Last time Pack ran those ropes, he ended up trying to get that crucifix hold on him. Stevie Lynn now applying the pressure. Pack making his way back to his feet. Series of elbows now trying to break that hold. Pack running those ropes again. But there's the lariat that he signaled for earlier. This time he gets it and Pack gets turned inside out. This could be it. Great way to break a neck. Oh, Pack still shows that he's in this. Despite taking that awesome wicked clothesline there. Pack, back into the corner. And Steve Lynn maybe showing signs of frustration, just a series of forearms to the face. Irish whips Pack. Tries for a shoulder block to the sternum. Goes flying to the outside. Steve Lynn, trying to get his breath back, no doubt. Also holding on to that shoulder, which could be separated. And is he walking out? Or I think Steven Ince is trying to get his... Wait a minute, Pax, he's on the post! What the hell? I have no idea what that is. 
And judging by the look on Stevie Lynn's face, he has no idea where he is. It was like a, a Sky Twister press drop kick. I have never, ever seen that. I've never seen anything like this. Pack certainly living up to all the hype that surrounds him. A sky twister drop kick to the floor from the post. It must have been about he must have been about eight to ten feet up in the air. I know. Hurricane Rana attempts here. No, Stevie Lynn catching him. Oh, he attempts it. However, Stevie Lynn just flips him. He ends on his back and double foot stomp to the back of Pag's head. That could be it. That could end your career, let alone just a match. Pack gets that left shoulder up and the fans erupt here and what a match, what a way to start off this live event here in Sudbury. Northern Light Suplex again right on the back of the head. Swinging Fisherman Buster and now Torture Rack on top of his head, Torture Rack Driver. Series of moves all based on that head. One, two. Three, go! This is the kind of action you will see at an FWA live event. Make sure you log on to FrontierWrestling.com to check out more hit where we're in your town and went from behind. Pack. Tiger Suplex on the back of Stevie Lynn's head now. Oh my lord. These two men just given absolutely everything. These fans getting behind both Pac and Stevie Lynch showing their appreciation for this match. Pack showing great strengths. Picks him up over his shoulder now. Stevie Lynch showing his weight advantage now. Brainbuster. Well, we know what the game plan is as Stevie Lynch. We've seen it through the majority of this match. He's just working on that head and now Send him up for Steve Lynn's 450 splash. We've seen him use this before in the FWA, including the victory over Mark Sloan. Pack moves out of the way, however, and Stevie Lynn's face hits nothing but that canvas. And now Pack signaling for maybe a brain buster of his own. And Falcon Arrow! Stevie Lynn has dropped on the back of his head. Pack signaling for something now. Maybe he's taking a bit too much time. Or, or I thought I saw Stevie Lynn's eyes roll into the back of his head. I have no idea what we're going to see here. Now. Holy! T Pack gets the victory in his FWA debut with a 6:30 splash. 6:30 sent on bomb, whatever you want to call it. It's Unbelievable. If there were any butterflies in the stomach or any nerves on Pack whatsoever, he certainly did not show it in this match. Pack is the real deal. Stevie Lynn making his way back up now. You can see the frustration on his face. I have never ever seen anything quite like this. And, and Pack and Stevie Lynn shaking hands show a great sportsmanship there. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our first of the title match of the evening. The following contest is for the FWA All England Championship. As stated there, this contest is for the FWA All England title. It is Leroy Kincaid's Open Invitation. Leroy Kincaid has made it be known that he will challenge anybody from all over the UK, from any promotion, and defend his All England title. And this challenge seems to be accepted by 3CW's The Dragon. Also goes by the name is Dragon Isu.
Followers of 3CW may also recognize him. Previously gone on the name of I-17, a man of many names. The Dragon has spent a lot of time uh, jaw jacking with the fans here. And, um, uh, I don't think the Dragon quite knows what he's got himself into here. I don't think he realises quite what he's going to be in for against uh, Man Mountain, that is the FWA All England Champion. Leroy Kincaid. Leroy Kincaid, he took that FWA All England title back at Hot Wild when he defeated the then longest reigning FWA All England Champion in history, the South City Thriller Hayde Vanson. Of course, we all know what Hayde Vanson then went on to do when he became the FWA British Heavyweight Champion back at New Frontiers. If you have not seen either of those two great matches or two great shows, and check out FrontierWrestling.com and check out those DVDs. And Dragon takes the microphone. Listen up, you FWA little idiots. It's time for you to feast your eyes on a real wrestler. Where? Um, good promotion, check out the DVDs. Now listen, the dragon is here, and I, all I want to say is, I hate FWA. But Maybe I'm changing my mind. I hate Southerners. Every single one of you, you're all Southern idiots. You're all idiots, you're so stupid. I'm not saying this, man is wrong but he needs a lot of help in as much as it is so therefore I don't think he should be uh, making more enemies Well, it seems like the Dragon is uh, interested in taking on more people than just the FWA All England Champion, the Dragon. Sorry, the FWA All England Champion, Leroy Kincaid. And that's he's about to make his way to the ring. So the Dragon's confident in defeating Leroy Kincaid, judging by what he said, because he didn't take on anybody. I don't think he um, really knows what he's got himself in for. Leroy Kincaid is probably going to kill him, to be quite honest. The dragon, I don't know quite, quite know what the dragon's got to do in order to get the victory over Leroy except maybe just jump him straight from the get go while Leroy's down and that's the wise thing to do Bell hasn't even rung now oh, there it is series of knife edge chops there I think he's been watching his Kenta Kabashi tapes series of shoulder blocks now from Leroy Kincaid who just picks him up and throws him straight into that opposite turnbuckle Irish whip clothesline decapitates the dragon Irish whip, Leroy. Back into those right. Caught the Luthez press attempt and just drills him down with that spine buster. Oh, teases when he's going to throw the dragon down with that standing power slam. I don't think Leroy Kincaid would have taken uh, many good comments from the, the dragon. And these Southern Fairies attempt. Whoa! Okay, the dragon's dead. It's epidemic now. It was the dragon just decimated in about 30 seconds by the FWA All England Champion Leroy Kincaid.
What a showing from the FWA All England champion. Well, this um, Southern Fairy, as uh, the dragon put it. Certainly had his way with the dragon. The FWA All England champion. Continuing his winning streak here in the FWA. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contract. Well, this isn't supposed to be next. Supposed to be Ice Man and Paul Travel, but that's well saying. I'll take seeing her over seeing Ice Man and Paul Travel any day. The FWA British Heavyweight Champion, the South City Thriller, Hayde Vanson. is making his way to the ring along with Nikita. And I don't know why they're coming out here. Or they're not scheduled to be on there. But you'll see them more later on this evening in the main event. And well, since Hayde Vanson has won the FKA British Heavyweight Championship, he's been walking around with more than just a cocky swagger. He's walking around like he owns the place and just doing what he wants, when he wants. And of course, back at New Frontiers, he took more than just that FWA British Heavyweight title from Alex Shane. He also took Alex Shane's ex-girlfriend, Nikita. The beautiful people. Hey, needs his own introduction from... and getting on the fans' case. What Hate Fancy was pointing out earlier is that tomorrow night at Crunch, despite the results of the tag team match, Hate Fancy will be defending that FWA British heavyweight title against the man making his way to the ring right now, Johnny Storm. And Johnny Storm obviously not taking too kindly to those words that Hate Vanson has just had for him.
Johnny Storm, definitely the fan favourite here at the FWA. Probably the top fan favourite in the country. Amen to that, brother. And it's all broken down now, Johnny Storm. Wait, and there's Nikita from behind. And Johnny Storm soon makes sure he grabs hold of her and stops her from interfering. I can't believe the change in attitude in Nikita ever since New Frontiers. Wait a minute, that's James Ty from behind. And now it's three on two with James Ty, Nikita and Hayde Vanson. And, oh no, and now James Ty, we know there's no lot of loss between these two. It's the Texas Cloverleaf. And, uh, and Hayde Vanson is just throwing him that. Wait a minute, that's the Phoenix, the Phoenix Jody Fleisch. Takes it to the FWA British Heavyweight Champion, Hayde Vanson. Irish whips him. No, and Hayde just scoots out. And the Phoenix Jody Fleisch. Coming to the aid of Johnny Storm. Well, I'm all for it. Well, I'm all for it. Well, come on, hey, come on, James. He was all for jumping from behind. No, they're just retreating. They don't want none of Johnny Storm and Johnny Flash just yet. They know the momentum is all. All in the corner of Jody and Johnny. They want to wait until they've got their regrouped and got their plan. That match coming up later this evening. Jody Fleisch and Johnny Storm against James Ty, the FWA British Heavyweight Champion, the South City thriller Hayde Vanson. Has this match got bad blood or what? This match has almost a year's worth of build to it. The Iceman, the insane icon, against the hardcore icon that is Paul Travell. This match has a lot of backstory to it. It all st first started at Broxbourne last year. When somebody seemed to take out Jack Xavier backstage. And so next thing we know, somebody's also taken out Mark Sloan and there is nobody about nobody saw anything there was no cameras catching anything Greg Lambert said he would find this person who was taking people out and it turned out it was great all under Greg Lambert's own doing as he brought in the Iceman 
to do his bidding in the FWA and that number one bidding was to take out Paul Travell who of course Greg Lambert has a serious history with back in the days of the family As I said, this match has looks like a, over a year's worth of build. And may I also present to you the most dangerous man in British wrestling, the insane icon, Iceman. This now match could seriously get ugly. Correct. How time these two got it on. Their first encounter. And I suppose the you people have come to see the so-called hardcore icon, the righteous Paul Travel, come out here with weapons and cheat and use that barbed wire baseball back, Mr. Pointy, and generally cause chaos. What? And that is because I spoke to FWA management earlier today. And I wonder how hard that was. we thought it was originally going to be a, a street fight between them. It's actually going to be a straight wrestling match. Greg Lambert screwing the fans out of that match and also screwing Paul Travell out of getting more than just his hands on the Iceman, also using his barbed wire bat, Mr. Pointy. And here comes the righteous Paul Travell. And Paul seems to have, he seems to have forgotten something there. Maybe, maybe, left the, maybe left his phone on backstage here. Who knows? Oh no, wait. Oh, he's got a series of weapons with him, but... It's not supposed to, according to Greg Lyon, but it's not a hardcore match. It's... Paul Travell will be suspended. Paul Travell will be suspended if he uses... Questionable management rules being thrown out here. I don't know how much truth there is actually to what Greg Lambert is saying. Apparently, Paul Traverse is going to tell him with his feet and his fists. 
Don't expect this match to be anything pretty. This is just going to be two men beating the living hell out of one another. Don't expect any wrist locks. Don't expect any flying head scissors. Don't expect any farmers carry takeovers. This is just going to be a fight. And now Travel picks up that, that canister there and just has to throw it away. His natural instinct was to see something, pick it up and whack him with it. Now oh, Paul Travel standing to the top rope. Double sledge straight to the forehead. The last time we saw these two actually in a match against one another, it was back at Universal Opera where Paul Travel teamed with the Sandman, Steve Carino and Mick Foley to take on Alex Shane, Stick Stone and that man, the Iceman. Their elimination came when Paul Travel dived off the Coventry Skydome balcony with a Tornado DDT onto the Iceman that took both of them out of the match. Second rope leg drop there. Seemed to connect hard with the eye of the Iceman. Paul Travel seems to be enjoying uh, his participation in this match so far. Just throws the Iceman into the ropes, and as Iceman rebounds, catches him with that point of the elbow. Greg Lambert quick to remind everyone that the weapons are banned in this match. And Iceman there was going to the ropes while Paul Travel seems to be trying to separate the elbow and shoulder of the Iceman. Like I said, he just wants to physically take him apart and there's a drop kick to the face. This is the first time these two have competed against one another in a singles match. And now Travel just choking away on the Iceman. Paul Travel has waited over a year for this. Neck breaker there from Paul Travel. Gets a two count. If Paul Travel looks earlier, he is a hardcore wrestler. He is the hardcore icon of British wrestling. Scoop slams. Great strength there from Paul Travel. Another, another drop kick there. Iceman retreats to the outside. I'm not quite sure he's going to be too safe there, like Travel can take to the air. And he does. Somersault Plancher crushes the Iceman in between his own body weight and that steel structure, those steel ring barriers. Come on, little man. And Paul Travel has just taken it to the Iceman. All that frustration and all that rage and all that anger was completely built up. And now, just raking the eyes of the Iceman and sends him head first into that steel ring barrier. And tries to tip him up over those barriers, however, the pairs were giving way. Iceman's a big, hefty dude. Paul Travel, Irish whips, Iceman, they're just fighting along the, along the, the crowd now. It's supposed to be the FWA, it's supposed to be wrestling. And, and now, and now Travel set up for that tornado DDT. Oh, and he hits it on the solid floor. There's no mats out there. This may not be a, a hardcore match, but Paul Travel's going to use the, the as much lenience from the, as the rules as he can get. And over the top goes Iceman. Travel back into the ring and now trying to get this match done. He doesn't want to get counted out. I say this is a typical FWA rules match. There is a 20 count and Paul Travel is making it mean as much as possible. And now just methodically and slowly trying to take Iceman apart. However, it seems like he might be taking too much time. 
Iceman reverses the Irish whip, stuns Paul Travell and then follows up with a clothesline. Takes too much time on that one. Travell gets the feet up, back onto that second rope. Well, I mentioned earlier, maybe no high flying head scissor takeover there, but Paul Travell, ever the great athlete, uses that maneuver to take down the Iceman. Drives him down on his head and now Travell looking for something here. He's used to going outside and looking for weapons. Uh, well, I think Paul Travell's forgotten that if he uses any weapons, he's going to get disqualified. Wait a minute, he sees it. Sees a chair. Fan participation, ever a growing part of the FWA you've seen. He's going to use it. But no, the Steve referee Steve Linsky telling him not. But he'll get disqualified and suspended if he uses this. Right. Travell goes to hit Lambert with it and the referee doesn't see. Referee is overlooking it. Lambert and Oh, no, what? The, the referee's just seen that the chair is in the ring. Clothesline there. Quite sure. The referee has issued a public warning. Wait a minute. It seems like the referee did catch Iceman with it. And he's, he's given him a, a yellow card has been given to the Iceman. The yellow card has been issued to the Iceman for use of that weapon. That means he's only got, he can only break the rules one more time and that's it. He's disqualified. But I think that that chair shot may have been enough to just end this match for Paul Travell as it is. Big leg drop there to the back of the head. Iceman with all that body weight. Using a lateral press to cover. Paul Travell gets a two count there. Iceman at 22 stone. Certainly got a lot of weight advantage against the hardcore icon that is Paul Travell. So when he drops a leg drop, when he hits that side slam, that's no normal man coming down on top of you. It's a huge weight advantage here. Iceman, methodical in pace. Picks up the hardcore icon, sets him in the corner. They was gonna go for another one of those avalanche splashes. No, your hardcore icon dies. Shut your mouth, ugly. Iceman, not usually talking. Seems to be quite passionate his belief there, and no, that's not where you want to be, Paul. Running knee. That'll break a nose. This is for you, shithead. Oh, I apologise for that. Oh my god! Cannonball just rushes Paul Travell between the weight of the Iceman. And those, tur those turnbuckle pads. Don't be tricked by those turnbuckle pads. That's just, that's practically nothing that separates the, those pads from the steel that's behind them. Scoop slam there. Centile backsplash, all that weight coming down on the chest and the sternum and the midsection and the ribs. The hardcore icon. You see, the hardcore icon Paul Travell, he prepared for a hardcore match. He prepared for a street fight. He didn't prepare for a wrestling match. Whereas Iceman, the entire time, would have known that this would have been a wrestling match. Greg Lambert deliberately waited until now to point this out. Iceman sitting on the top rope, taking his time. Iceman 
seems to have a lot of problems for some fans at ringside and there's a sent on backsplash on the back of Paul Travell from that second rope Lambert just continuously getting in the face of Paul Travell we know the history involving those two it goes back years and years and years Iceman. Now, he had success off the second rope. He tries the top, takes far too long. Paul Travell uses everything he can to nip up. To try and hit this, what's he going for? A superplex here. T-Bone. Oh, he's trying this as a big man. T-Bone suplex from the top on the much larger Iceman. It took everything that Paul Travell had after all the punishment he has taken throughout this match, it took everything that Paul Travell had left to get the big man up and over in that T-bone. Both men down here, Paul Travell trying to use this opportunity to get his breath back and get a second wind. Much larger Iceman who's, for the last few minutes, been on the offensive. And now both men just trading kicks. Now punches, kicks, forearms all being thrown at one another. And now Iceman retaliates and I said it wasn't going to be pretty. Oh my, vicious headbutts there. Seems like Paul Travell was almost got a second win there, but Iceman. Wait a minute, Spinebuster. Great strength. And once again, everything that Paul Travell had left, he used to hit that Spinebuster. Travell seems to have got that second win and now he's going for that top rope splash. He hits this, it's over. Wait a minute, there's Lambert. Wait a minute, Lambert. Lambert's got Mr. Pointy. Lambert's found Mr. Pointy. He's got him behind his back and... Wait a minute, he's distracting both Paul Travell and the, and the referee, holding them so neither of them have seen that the Iceman now has that barbed wire bat. Lambert gets down and holds the referee and... Iceman uses that barbed wire bat shot to the midsection. It's all it's all okay when it's different rules, isn't it? One rule for one, another rule for the other. Steve Linsky is distracted by the by the fans now and icebreaker. Oh no, this is over. Iceman gets the victory thanks to Greg Lambert, who's quick to make a. Yeah, he's very proud of himself. Thought they could take him in a straight wrestling match. They needed Mr. Point, that barbed wire bat, to get the victory here. They didn't want to face Paul Travell when it had been a fair match. They didn't want to face him in a hardcore match where they both had the same kind of chances. No. These fans getting on the case of the Iceman, that barbed wire baseball bat, those points were taken straight into the stomachs with a stabbing effect. Who knows just how badly lacerated and cut Paul Travell is. But Travell is standing, and I don't know how. I have no idea how Paul Travell is still standing. And wait a minute. They made the mistake, they left the barbed wire back behind and... Oh, and there's a shot! Retaliation! Revenge attack from Paul Travell with a barbed wire baseball bat and now Greg Lambert has left all alone in the ring and... Oh, glasses. Oh, he's trying to say he wouldn't hit a man with glasses. And, and Paul Travell really wouldn't. so he takes the glasses off and uh, now Lambert's not wearing any glasses so he can feel free to head him all you want go for it and now he's got Lambert in a corner two three four a series of elbows straight to the head 
of Greg Lambert. And there's another one. And a, that's the tenth one. Drives another one down. And, and Lambert looks like he's just been electrocuted. Raising effect on that final elbow. And now he's setting him up for that sacrificial slam. And dead weight. You want to use it? Wait a minute. Over the top. Iceman. Paul Javel couldn't keep hold of Lambert. Lambert fell behind just as he went to grab him again. Iceman pulls him out. But the effects have already been felt on both the Iceman and Greg Lambert. Both Iceman and Paul Travell felt the effects of that barbed wire bat. And that leads us into tomorrow night's ultra violent hardcore match between the two. They didn't get it settled here tonight. Tomorrow night at Crunch, everything will be legal. happens tomorrow night if you're not gonna be there then make sure you get that DVD because it's gonna be violent now the following contest is a tag team match and it's the first in a best of three match series I said it there this is an FWA Academy tag team match here the first in a best of three series the first to happen tonight, the second to take place tomorrow night at Crunch, and the third, should it be needed, will take place at Noah Limits 2 on April 30 at the Colchester Hippodrome. That show will also feature Wrestling Hall of Fame legend Brett the Hitman Hart, and also in his FWA debut, former cruiserweight champion, Billy Kidman. And now making their way to the ring, the team of Mark Slide and Ollie Burns, the entourage. They are the FWA Academy Tag Team Champions, Ollie Burns pointed out. Sloan and Burns there. Mark Sloan, of course, the founding father of the FWA. In the humble days of the Fatton Wrestling Alliance. Teaming up with his number one student, Ollie Burns. And Ollie Burns as a man who has a hell of a career ahead of him. And they're taking on the team of Max Voltage and Dan Head. The FWA Academy Champion Dan Head teaming with Max Voltage. These two men know each other extremely well. Check out the FWA Academy DVDs to see some of these guys' epic battles. Of course, Mark Sloan knows all three men in this ring incredibly well, having trained all three. Sloan and Max Voltage have done battle many, many, many times. As has Mark Sloan and Dan Head. 
Just a three series starting off now. Fans firmly in the corner of Max Voltage and Dan Head. Mark Sloan taking his time. Fans not exactly in the corner of Mark Sloan and Ollie Burns there. Mark Sloan mocking Max Voltage's attempts to get the crowd behind him. Lock up attempt there by Max Voltage. Mark Sloan hooks the arm, goes underneath, takes the leg of the much quicker. Max Voltage, Mark Sloan kips up. Sloan and Voltage now circling around again. Both men going for a type, however, Sloan takes the arm. Swings Voltage round and grounds him straight away under the arm takedown. Max Voltage is underneath. Tries to get the advantage, however, Mark Sloan takes him down using his technique on that wrist lock. However, there's the speed, of, speed and agility being used to great effect there by Max Voltage. Sloan kicks the arm away, tries to go for a wrist lock. Max Voltage tries to block it, however, Mark Sloan uses that headbutt. He's able to throw himself up, go underneath. Max Voltage tried to break it, however, Mark Sloan still keeps hold. Mark Sloan, obviously the superior wrestler, the superior technical wrestler in this match and one of the more superior technical wrestlers in the actual country. Mark Sloan must be going for a clothesline. Voltage ducks, single leg take now. Voltage comes off those ropes. Back drop attempt, Voltage lands on his feet. Enziguri kick there, sends Sloan to the outside. Whoa. He's going to go for that dive through the rope. Sloan moved out of the way. Voltage tried another one. Sloan moved out of the way again. And there's a cutter. And now Dan Head and Ollie Burns are in the ring. Series of shoulder blocks now. Burns with the momentum in his way. Dan Head tries to trip Burns twice now. Leapfrog. Two leapfrog attempts. Ollie Burns from behind. Heads is a takeover there. Dan Head with a nice deep arm drag on Burns. Now over the shoulder, Dan Head's going for that finishing move of his. Burns gets out, pushes, and here comes that serious attack team flurry, offense and finishing with that big boot to the side of the head. Burns with a cover on Head. Head gets that left shoulder up. And just like that, the tag team expertise of Mark Sloan and Ollie Burns comes into effect and the momentum has changed and is firmly in the corner of Sloan and Burns. Snapmare takedown by Mark Sloan followed by that rear chin lock with the knee placed firmly into the back of Dan Head. Wearing down Head and now Sloan pulls back and just drives that knee once again into the spine of Dan Head. Series of forearms there to the gut, tries to break that hold. However, Mark Sloan just yanks, just yanks down on the shoulder, sort of the hair of uh, Dan Head and pulls him back into the ring. Gets a two count, follows up with a stop, keeps hold of him. And that's how he's just keeping him near his own corner. That wise move there, when he reaches for the tag, he steps on the arm of Dan Head so he can't scoot away and try to make the tag to Max Voltage. They have separated that ring, they've completely broken it in half so that Dan Head can't get anywhere near his tag team partner Max Voltage for the tag. Burns, despite being so young, has a lot of, has a lot of arrogance and look, he's doing the same thing. He stood on the leg while he reached over for the tag of Mark Sloan and got in the way to try and stop Max Voltage from getting in. And oh, 
Oh! Take pity. Max Voltage in there to make the save. Could have been a three count. Dan head from behind with a roll up, however. There's Burns. Kick to the back of the head. That disorientates. Dan Head is, he ended up rolling away from this corner rather than two and Sloan quickly follows it up with a knee drop to the back of the head. Tag there. Come on, Dan. Burns and Sloan are definitely tag team specialists here. And to be quite honest, they're, they're the FWA Academy tag team champions but in my opinion it's probably only a matter of time before we see these two men with gold around their waist on the FWA main shows with all the FWA tag team belts. A series of knees now. What they lack in size they make up for and that tag team wrestling ability and the overall smarts and that devious tactics of Mark Sloan. Running forearm on Dan Head brings Dan Head back into his corner keeps hold of him they have the count of five to break that once again keeping Dan Head in their half of the ring and, and I think Mark Sloan just knocked Max Voltage down then and follows up with another kick to Dan Head headbutt to Dan Head Voltage now getting back up onto the apron he wants nothing more than to get back into this match. Oh, Sloan took far too much time. Tried for a variation of that scissor kick now. Dan Head using his head to his advantage. Mark Sloan made a mistake and perhaps going for a headbutt on Dan Head. Clearly didn't work. Dan Head getting a bit of a second win back in and catching Sloan with that backdrop. Catching Burns with those headbutts to the shoulder. And a flying headbutt of his own takes Burns down. And now Dan Head maybe. Dan Head maybe hit that tag and swinging flatliner there. Oh yeah, Dan Head is signaling for going up top. Maybe he should have been going for the tag. Oh, he's taken far too much time to get up there. He's had so much taken out of him in this match. Definitely should have been going for the tag. Top rope splash misses. Took far too long. And there's a mistake from Head where he should have been going for that tag. And now Dan Head is back in to square one in the position he didn't want to be in. That's on the defensive of Mark Sloan and Ollie Burns. Sloan with a flying knee to the back of the head gets a two. Backbreaker on Head. Another two count. Mark Sloan realises just how close they were to the corner of Max Voltage. So separates the ring once more, one more time. Puts him in that headlock. In front face lock, trying to keep him away from that tag. And Ollie Burns comes into the ring and just in time to stop the referee from seeing the tag. And, and wait a minute, and there's the referee. He didn't see the tag, even though Dan Head made it. Tag Team Wrestling 101. And again, another series of offense and flurry moves from Burns and oh, knockout shot. This could be it. Linsky turns around and Head gets the left shoulder up. And there's a headbutt. There's a kick to the inner thigh and just follow up with a knee to the head. Another tag and Dan Head is back in the part of the ring that he just does not want to be in. And that's back in the corner of Sloan and Burns. Scoop slam there from Burns on the Dan Head. Swing and elbow drop from Burns onto Dan Head. Hooks the leg. Max Voltage in to make the save. It doesn't surprise me considering the amount of time that they've been working on Dan Head. Nice, vicious, open hand, palm strike there. And there's Burns in the corner while the referee is distracted and over with Sloan and Max Voltage. Burns is just choking away.
and now Burns with his foot against the throat of Dan Head. He's got a five count to break it and he does just in the nick of time. Sloan on the outside making use of the fact the referee wasn't looking and hitting a couple of palm strikes. Burns once again keeping hold of Dan Head, keeping him in their corner, keeping him in their half of the ring. Burns Irish whips. Dan Head into the opposite turnbuckle. Telegraphs that. Dan Head gets the elbow up. That time it's the foot. Burns tries to running a third time. Diving cross body from Dan Head. Takes Burns down. All that weight crushing him down. And now Dan Head trying to get to the tag. Sloan tries to cut him off. Head rolls through and there's the tag to Max Voltage. Max Voltage has been on the outside for a good seven or eight minutes. Handspring elbow, Max Voltage. Full of energy now, springboards off the ropes. Asahi Moonsault takes down Burns, rolls through, tries for the cover. There's Mark Sloan, breaks it up. And now Sloan and Burns trying to double team. However, there's Dan Ed, he hooks the, he hooks the leg of Mark Sloan, stopping that double team. Sunset flip from Max Voltage. Just as Burns countered that, Sloan went in for the drop kick to try and break it and ended up drop kicking the face of his own partner. Double wheelbarrow suplex there. And now the momentum has completely changed. It's in the corner of Dan Head and Max Voltage. And Max Voltage signaling to go up top where he is very, very confident. And no doubt if he hits this move, it will be over. 450. Sloan, Max Voltage saw that Sloan moved out of the way, landed on his feet, but Sloan quickly up and hits that flying knee, which turns Max Voltage inside out. Sloan and Burns, the tag team specialist, back in control. Another series of offensive moves here. Clothesline Lariat size suplex combination. And Sloan and Burns back in control. Burns hits both legs. Voltage gets that left shoulder up and tries to pull himself back up using the ropes. Sloan and Burns, meanwhile, taking far too much time posing to the crowd, thinking they've got the victory. Whoa! Dan Head, Irish rip, Ollie Burns went underneath. And Max Voltage came out of nowhere with a springboard drop kick. And now the Mark Sloan was taken out and sent to the outside. Dan Head and Max Voltage signaling. Maybe this will be it. And there's, the referee is over now. Wait a minute, there's power to the eyes. Power to the eyes of Max Voltage. Now, Ollie Burns with a swinging backbreaker. Sloan is on top. Double footstop to the head of Dan Head. Knockout shot. Burns rolls through with a variation of the catatonic. And Sloan applies that surfboard double team maneuver here. Referees allowing it. Dan Head. Dan Head seems to be out of it. And the referee calls for the bell. Sloan and Burns, thanks to the illegal use of that powder on the outside, get the victory by submission. And they go 1 0 up in this best of three series. It's all down to tomorrow night at Crunch. If Sloan and Burns can get the victory, they take this best of three series and there will be no need for them to go to Colchester. They can have the night off. And you can see the powder in the eyes and the face of Max Voltage on the outside as they were robbed. And the FWA Academy Tag Team Champions cheat themselves to another victory and now Dan Head and Max Voltage find themselves on the defensive and it's all or nothing tomorrow night at Crunch Sloan and Burns it was a great match it was just a shame that the finish had to come in such a fashion.
as I said earlier, it's all down to tomorrow night at Crunch at Broxbourne. It's all or nothing for Voltage and Head. And another victory, albeit by questionable means, for Sloan and Burns. We'll see how this plays out again tomorrow night. This evening we saw the debut of one FWA competitor in the form of Pack. We're about to see another debut in the FWA. This time it's not from no youngster, it's from a 15 year veteran. It is Paul Tyrrell. It will be no easy debut match for him whatsoever. As, as said earlier, this is a battle of the Essex boys. And making his way through right now, the 15-year veteran, Paul Tyrrell. He has travelled all over the world. And he is now making his debut here for the FWA. The Essex bad boy, Paul Tyrrell, will have his work cut out for him, though, in the form of the Essex Chav. The pucker one, Darren Burridge. Paul Tyrrell doesn't seem to be winning many fans here this evening. And we all know that music. The very familiar theme of the pucker one, Darren Burridge. And Darren Burridge makes his way to the ring now to a chorus of cheers from the fans. And he's given us a live rendition of his theme music. God bless that man. And one fan practically tries to take the pucker one home with her. If we can wait till after the match, that'll be grand. Pucker doesn't seem that interested in her. He's more interested in another female fan and her ring sign and bless him. Burridge, as always, the fan favourite. Battle at the Essex boys here in Sudbury. Isn't that far away from home for either of these men? Sudbury's actually on the Essex border. Makes this battle with the Essex boys even more important. Pucker one takes the mic. Yes. 
Terrell having a few choice words. Paul Tyrrell, a few choice words there for Darren Burridge. Started battle with the Essex boys. Fans firmly in the corner of Darren Burridge. The unorthodox approach of the pucker one. Seemingly taking Paul Tyrrell, the Essex bad boy. Maybe slightly off his game, both men lock up. Burridge backs to it to the corner. Clean break attempt there from Burridge. However, Tyrrell just pushes him out. Both men circling one another. Once again, another clean break attempt by Burridge. However, Terrell once again showing absolutely no respect and just shoving him away. Both men lock up one more time. This time it's Burridge who's backed up into the ropes. Will we see a clean break from Terrell? Well, an attempted one. However, Burridge returned the favour, this time shoving him away. Irish whip. Burridge with the momentum. Sends Terrell down. Trip up attempt there. Burridge went over and ended up getting a hip block attempt. Nice deep arm drag by the pucker one. She's the ropes. Close line and Tyrrell's until the outside. And the advantage is completely in the side of Darren Burridge. And there's the furry dice. Diving Pescado to the outside. But Burridge took a nasty spill. Landing on that guard round end up going through it Burridge is back up European upper cup there by Burridge keeping on top of Tyrrell Tyrrell checking his face to see if it's all in one piece Irish rips Tyrrell straight into the ring post there looks like he tried to do his best to get his hands up Tyrrell sent back inside the, Vic, inside the ring. Burridge doesn't want to get this far count out. Now Tyrrell caught Burridge on his way back into the, Vic, back into the ring. Now Tyrrell staying on top of him with a series of stomps. Nothing technical about this. And now Tyrrell using the ropes to his advantage, he's got a five count to break it. Waits until the four. I said earlier, Tyrrell, a veteran of 15 years in the wrestling business. Competed all over the world. From Ireland to Thailand, to the United States of America, to Australia, to New Zealand. Knee lift on Darren Burge there. Now, Tyrrell. 
staying on top with that reverse chin lock there. Keeping the pucker one down. Burrage trying to get the fans behind him. Uses the momentum. Series of elbows. Breaks the hold. Hits the ropes. However, Tyrrell cuts him right back off with that clothesline. Burrage trying to get some momentum behind him. Takes far too long though, take, talking to the fans. Burrage from behind with that schoolboy. Gets her, gets her two count. Tries in for a forearm. However, Tyrrell cuts him, cuts him right back off again. Boot to the stomach and now he's sitting on back with a rear chin lock. All the pressure being applied to that back of the neck there. Now sitting back even more in a variation of a camel clutch. Now rolls back in that reverse chin lock that he had earlier. Once again trying to take all the air away from the pucker one. Just grounding him down. And the pucker one trying to get the fans back into this. And the fans are responding. And Pucker, one more time, goes underneath. Series of elbows. This time when Tyrrell tries to cut him off with that clothesline, he ducks and he hits that swing and slam on him. Burridge rolls over, takes everything he has just to roll over and get a cover. Can Burridge make this, make the most of this opportunity and that mistake? However, when he charges in again, Tyrrell one more time cuts him off. And there's a series of shoulder blocks to the back of the pucker one. Tyrrell making a very impressive debut here. Vicious scoop slam there on Darren Burridge. Tyrrell takes to the second rope. Second rope leg drop. But Tyrrell, once again, taking far too much time, pandering to the crowd, instead of staying on top of the pucker one. Positions Burridge onto the second rope and is using those ropes in his knee to choke out. Once again, he has a five count to break. He breaks on four. And out of nowhere comes Terrell, using his weight to once again clothesline the throat of Burridge. Oh, takes far too long. Burridge rolls through, quick cover. Almost gets three. Terrell taken by surprise there. Burridge once again tries to keep the momentum going, but Terrell just pulls him down and ends up with Burridge face first in the turnbuckle. Terrell's just stayed one step ahead of Burridge throughout this entire contest. Every time Burridge does something to try and get some momentum going, there's Tyrrell again with a counter. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute what's going on here? Tyrrell. Tyrrell's being run ragged here. The unorthodox style of Darren Burridge. He's trying to go underneath. It's not pretty. It's just unorthodox to take Tyrrell off his game so he doesn't know what's coming next. And he ends up with a side suplex. And both men down. The referee begins the 10 count. If neither man makes it to his feet, this match will result in a double count out. Both men up at eight, trading forearms. The question is, was that long enough for Burridge to try and get a second win. Burridge took far too long there. Pandering, it was made to pay with a vicious thumb to the eye there. And Terrell back on top again. Every time Burridge tries to get himself a second win, there's Terrell, one step ahead, the 15 year pro. Springboard splash there from Tyrrell. Follows up with a neck breaker. 
And back onto the second row. Maybe we're going to see another one of those leg drops. No, this time he's going to the top. Top rope drop kick there. Sends Burridge down. And Tyrrell now signaling that it's finished. Wait a minute. One, there's only one minute remaining on this 15 minute match. These guys have been going for 14 minutes now. Tyrrell needs to make the most of this. And now, wait a minute. Burridge out of nowhere. Hits that pucker lock. That's, that, that's Darren Burridge's finishing maneuver there. Tyrrell able to get out of it, out of nowhere. Both men are now just going to be going for everything. Trying to get their primary moves out and trying to get that finisher. And once again, Burridge ends up with that pucker lock. Back on Paul Tyrrell. Can he get it one more time? There was a 30 second call there. One more time. Burridge going for the pucker lock. And can Paul Tyrrell get out of it for a third attempt? It doesn't look like it. 10 seconds gone. There's a countdown. Six, five. Can Tyrrell hold on? Three. Can Burridge pull him off? Pulled off the move. And Tyrrell tapped. Tyrrell tapped. Was it just before the, was it before the time limit ran out? Did he tap before the time limit expired? Ladies and gentlemen, referee Andy Corbin has informed me that the time limit expired A time limit draw in the battle with the Essex boys. And the fans are trying for five more minutes. The fans want in five more minutes and it seems that the pucker one wants it as well. Tyrrell's holding on to that arm. You can see the Paul Tyrrell doesn't seem to be too interested in five more minutes though. Burridge has the mic. I'm you what, Paul Tyrrell. It sounds to me that like the good people of Sudbury have Well, the fans want five more minutes. Burridge wants five more minutes. Five more minutes seem to be given to this match now, and, and we're going to have a winner. And the action is starting again, and they're countering one another. They're ducking and diving. Oh, and there's a low blow. The referee giving Paul Tyrrell a yellow card there for the low blow. And wait a minute, and now the pucker elbow driven straight into the sternum. And the pucker one singling to go up top. Will this be the end of this match? Can the pucker one, Darren Burridge, Oh, Till saw Burridge going up to top rope, shoves the referee into the ropes, and that sends Burridge down, crutching him. The referee seems to be down and stunned. Till going to the top rope. Hurricane Rana, Burridge lands hard on the back of his head. Hooks the leg, and referee's tapping him. Till thinks he has the victory, I'm not so sure. And, and the referee is saying that. And Paul Tyrrell has been disqualified. A low blow followed by putting his hands on the referee.
Paul Terrell is disqualified against Darren Burridge and Darren Burridge gets the victory by DQ. Terrell looks angry. Burridge takes the mic. Fans solely behind Burridge. Fans getting on the case of Paul Tyrrell, who did indeed cheat. Challenge made there by... Challenge made there by Burridge for a street fight at April 30 at No Limits 2 in Colchester. Burridge getting in the face of Paul Terrell. The street fight challenge has been made. The challenge has been accepted April 30 at the Colchester Hippodrome. No one limits two. Essex rules an Essex street fight between the pucker one Darren Burridge and Paul Tyrrell. Aaron Burridge now celebrating with a photographer. This evening, Nikita and Hayde Vanson 
make their way to the ring. They lured out Johnny Storm where James Tight attacked him from behind. They did a number on him, but Jody Fleisch was able to make the save. Did Jody Fleisch get there in time? That's the question. The FWA British Heavyweight Champion, Hayde Vanson. wrestling wizard that is James Tyre. A couple to the ring, Ryan Nikita to take on the Wonder Kid, Johnny Storm and the Phoenix, Jody Flyers. Now remember tomorrow night at Broxbourne, it will be Hay Fancy defending the FWA British Heavyweight Championship against Johnny Storm. Just like we saw early this evening with Pack and Stevie Lynn, momentum is such a key important factor going into tomorrow night's tunnel matches. The first son of the FWA, James Ty. I'm sure he would like nothing more than the FWA heavyweight title. The Red British Heavyweight Champion, Hayde Vanson. He will want to do as much of a number as possible on Johnny Storm so that Johnny Storm tomorrow night isn't 100%. Hear the music, and here comes Johnny Storm and Jody Fleisch. And both of these men now rushing their way to the ring and going straight after James Ty and Hayde Vanson. And of course, Johnny Storm going after James Ty. There's no love, no love lost there whatsoever. Hayde Vanson and Jody Fleisch. Run after one another, Hayde Vanson dropped Jody Fleisch on his head viciously at a show in Manchester just two weeks ago, resulting in the Wonder Kid being knocked out. Oh, whoa, somersault plunge to the outside of Vanson by the Wonder Kid Johnny Storm. Jody took to the outside against. James Ty and Storm and Fleisch are in control of this match. Storm and, Storm and Fleisch taken to the outside. Circling Ty and Vanson. Meeting of the minds there between those two. Storm and Fleisch keeping on top of Ty and Vanson. And now maybe we can get this tag team match underway. Back in the ring. James Ty tried to take control. Run up for the arm drag there. Those Johnny Storm. Makes the tag to Jody Fleisch. Mid movement. James Ty meanwhile rolled out. Hit the tag on Hayde Vanson. Hayde and Jody now in the ring. Springboard crossbody. Hayde Vanson goes to the outside. Oh, it, Nikita's in the ring. And wait a minute, she tried to jump. Jody Fleisch from behind. Johnny Storm saw it coming, dro dropped toe hold. Looked like uh, Nikita was going to be punished. Which is a beautiful thing. Fans firmly behind Jody Fleisch and Johnny Storm. James Ty tries to rush him. Double arm drag there. Double drop kick on James Ty. Irish whip on Ty by the Phoenix. Ty reverses. 
Nikita pulled the ropes down and out goes Jody Fleisch and there's Hayde Vanson from behind. This match will consistently be three on two throughout it and this is something that Jody Fleisch and Johnny Storm are going to have to deal with. The difference maker on the outside being the Queen of Chaos Nikita. Authorities men, of course, were involved in the Champion Series back at New Frontiers where Hay Batson took the FWA title. And also the girlfriend of Alex Shane, or the ex-girlfriend of Alex Shane in the form of Nikita. Jodie Fleisch was taken out of the Champion Series early in the evening by a double-team spike pole driver courtesy of that man in the ring there, James Ty. And also Doug Williams. Stomp straight into the sternum from the second rope. James Ty with a cover. Flash just a right shoulder up. Immediately, instinctively reaches over to try and make that tag. All the wind was taken out of him, and James Ty keeps on top. Double team move there. Oh, vicious side thrust kick there from Vance in the urban assault vehicle. Taking it to the Phoenix. And there's another drop kick straight to the face. Seems to be working on the head. Maybe setting up for another one of those South City drillers. We saw back at Manchester that knockout shot that was delivered to the Phoenix. Running knee straight to the chin. Knife edge chop. series of chops and right hands there. Vanson springs off the ropes and there's another drop kick to the head of the Phoenix Jody Fleisch and Jody needs to make the tag. Drives the knee to the back of the head does hey these fans getting behind Jody and Johnny. They want to see Johnny Storm in this match. They want to see Johnny take it to Hayde after what happened earlier. Hayde Branson telegraphs that Irish whip. Running clothesline and Fleisch. Turn inside out. Ace fans behind Jody and Johnny. Scoop slam on Fleisch from Vanson. Tags in to James Ty. James Ty, 2001 Rookie of the Year in 2001 at the first British Uprising. He took part in a now classic three way dance involving Raj Ghosh. And oh, oh, Irish whip there. Looked like Johnny Storm was coming into the ring. Involving Raj Ghosh and Jack Xavier, James Ty meanwhile, while those other two have since left the FWA, James Ty has continued on, including main event in the British Uprising 2, and also main event in the British Uprising 3. Nice standing drop kick there by Ty. Covers on Fleisch. Ty keeping the momentum and the pressure on Fleisch. European uppercut there from Ty. Fans in the corner of Jody Fleisch and James Ty. Nice back elbow from James Ty. Tag to the South City thriller, Hayde Vanson. Oh! And now it seems like the two of them are focusing their efforts on the left knee of Jody Fleisch. Jody known for his high flying, especially that shooting star press of his. You take the knee out, and you cannot hit any of those high flying moves, and there's that. 
rolling trip over, followed by the kick and the drop kick to the back of the head. And Jody Flies really needs to make the tag. He's been in the ring now for a good six or seven minutes, just taking constant offense. You can hear Johnny Storm on the outside, incredibly frustrated. Irish whip. Jody reverse. Vanson scoops out. And there's an enziguri from Fleisch. Sends Vanson face first into that middle turnbuckle. Fleisch needs to try and make the tag. He's oh so close. Can he get the tag? And Vanson cuts him off and grabs hold of that leg as well and drags him closer to make the tag to James Ty. Leaping elbow drop from Ty onto Jody Fleisch. Arrogant press there from Ty. Jody kicks out at two. Series of strikes now. Jody trying to fight back. Hits the ropes. Gets met with a forearm from Ty. And Ty now going for that Ty fighter. And hits it perfectly. Hooks the leg. This could be it. Flash kicks out at two. Storm was there to jump in for the break up of the count. And Ty keeps on top. Another backbreaker on Fleisch. Once again, keeping Fleisch in the corner. And Vatson tags in. And Vanson. Arrogance and Vanson shining through. And he just goes after Storm on the outside. The referee trying to keep Storm on the outside. Storm back in his corner. While all three, Nikita, Vanson. And Ty just triple teamed at Phoenix. The referee didn't see any of that. He was over with Storm. Ty now taking Fleisch to the turnbuckle. Another European uppercut. Irish whip from Ty to the Phoenix. Tag to Vanson. Double team move here. Referee over with Johnny Storm. Vanson. Vanson hits nothing but turnbuckle. Drop toe hole from the Phoenix onto James Ty. Sends him straight back into the thriller. Double team attempt here. Phoenix moves out of the way and that running right off clothesline. Hits nothing but his own partner. Moonsault Pele kick from Phoenix. Jody Fleisch hits the skull of Hade Vanson. And all three men are in the ring and down. And this is the best opportunity the Phoenix has had to make the tag to Johnny Storm. He finally gets it. And Storm is in the ring. And Storm going straight after Vanson. Wait a minute. He faked going after Vanson. Double springboard. Hurricane runner takedown on James Ty. Step up in Zaguri. Sends Vanson to the outside. Johnny Storm has come in. Uh, well rested and full of offense. Storm. Corkscrew body plancher. Takes down both Vanson and Ty. They end up going through the barricade. All three men down on the outside. Jody Fleisch, the only man on the inside. And now Jody Fleisch on the outside. Taking it straight to James Ty. And now Jody, James Ty and Jody Fleisch now brawling around and it seems to be breaking down here. They're going through the entranceway, they're brawling around the building. While Johnny Storm and Hayde Vanson, they're now brawling around ringside. And James Ty. James Ty and Jody Fleisch brawling around in the chairs. Johnny Storm and Hayde Vanson meanwhile are on the inside. And James Ty trying to Irish rip. Jody Fleisch into that. He springs up. He tries to stops himself from going head first into that wall by grabbing hold of the basketball hoop. And now Jody 
being set up for a suplex. Johnny Storm signaling for that wonder well. Jody Fleisch hits that suplex on James Ty. Meanwhile, in the ring, Johnny Storm's trying to go for the wonder well. Vanson sees it coming. Irish whip attempt. Wall unit! Jody Fleisch runs up that wall with that moonsault. And brainbuster from Vanson on Storm. This could be it. Hooks both legs. One, two. Jody Fleisch is in the round to make the save, but Storm gets that left shoulder up. It's chaos here at the Sports Centre in Sudbury. It's all four men just taking it to one another. Ty and, Ty and Fleisch balling around the building. They're now making their way back to ringside. Vanson keeping on top of Storm on the inside. And now the Phoenix, Jody Fleisch with a springboard drop kick to Vanson. And Fleisch now taking it to the FWA British Heavyweight Champion. He wants revenge after what happened to him in Manchester. Vanson tried to counter it. Fleisch met him with a standing hurricane runner. Sends Vanson flying into the ring, gets a two count. Ty tried to make the save, wasn't able to in time. However, Vanson managed to get that shoulder up. And now, Van sorry, Ty coming from behind, trying to hit with that pump handle, explode a suplex. Ty rolls over, he gets the count. This could be it. Fleisch gets the shoulder up. Ty doesn't realize from behind comes Johnny Storm. Wheelbarrow DDT sends Ty down. Storm now makes the pen attempt. Two, there's Vanson with the save from behind. And now the threader going for the going through the South City driller. Wonderwall on Vanson. The two count though. Vanson would not got a shoulder up had James Ty not made the save. If that happens tomorrow night at Crunch, we will crown a new FWA British Heavyweight Champion. Vanson, he is taken out. Johnny Storm tries. The crossbody gets met with that Titanic Northern Lights bomb. From behind, Jody Fleisch makes the save. It's pandemonium here at the Sports Centre. And now Jody Fleisch firing up. Going into the ring, maybe sets up. 720 DDT being set up here. Can he hit it? He goes for it. Ty catches. Under the arm he goes. Jody Fleisch runs up those turnbuckles, hits a variation of the 720. Rolls over for the pin attempt. Vanson pulls Ty out of the ring. Breaking up the attempt. And now Vanson in there with Jody Fleisch. Ducks him. Nice spinning back heel kick. South City. Oh my God. Oh my God. His, his neck's broken. That's it. That knocked him out. And Jody Fleisch. Jody Fleisch is out. Jody Fleisch would not have kicked out having been dropped on his head from the South City driller. Vanson gets backdrop outside. He's out of the ring. Ty left alone. Wonder kick from Johnny Storm. Back suplex attempt here. He sets him up on that top turnbuckle. And then what is this? Maybe a top turnbuckle back suplex. No. Top turnbuckle, hurricane, reverse hurricane runner perhaps. And that's when he hits. Ty lands on his feet. Both men, Fanson and, and Ty take it. There's the Wonder Well. And Jolly Storm gets the victory. Nikita tried to run for the save. Fleisch catches her. And Jody Fleisch and the Wonder Kid Johnny Storm get the victory. Leading into Crunch tomorrow night in Broxbourne. Remember, if you're not there, make sure you buy the DVD by logging on to FrontierWrestling.com and clicking merchandise. Nikita has been left in the ring with Flush, and she, I do not recommend her doing that. She just slapped the Phoenix. However, the Phoenix grabs her by the hair and puts it. He tried to do this earlier. Maybe we're going to see a little spanky spanky on the Queen of Chaos. And that's what they're setting up for. And Nikita is being spanked by Jody Fleisch and Johnny Storm. And Nikita sprawls out to the outside. Jody Fleisch and Johnny Storm get the victory against James Titan, Hayden Vanson in an epic tag team battle.
Johnny Storm gets the victory over James Tyne with a wonder well. He goes into Brock's bond against that man right there, Hayde Vanson, with all the momentum. Challenging for the FWA British Heavyweight title. If he can hit that wonder well on Vanson, we will crown a new FWA British Heavyweight Champion.